Oh. Yeah, I want to. I want to get. I want. I want. I got a shot at Vanderlei. Hopefully, first round. Give him. Give him to me in the first round next week. Quinton Rampage Jackson took a tough fought decision over Brazilian top team fighter Marillo Bustamante. He too looked to get his shot at the champion. Silva found himself fighting a familiar opponent in the opening round as he stood across from Kazushi Sakuraba for a third time. This was a critical fight for Sakuraba. If he lost, he may never get another shot at Silva and his middleweight title. We are underway here. Final fight of the night. Oh, oh a left nice. hand to the face. Uh -oh. That one uh -oh. had to and be stopped. Yes, it is. Yeah, no, uh, future thing. And there's some combination soccer. Oh, nice with piece. The D. One big one is gonna land. But the oh, oh, and there no, it is. And there He's it no, is. No. And there oh, it is. No. And there it is. Silva's fists once again proved to be Sakuraba's foil as he dispatched the Japanese legend in spectacular fashion. Olympic gold medalist and judo legend Hirahiko Yoshida rounded out the semifinals, earning his place by choking out wrestler Kiyoshi Tamura. The semifinals and finals of the tournament were set to take place just three months later at the Tokyo Dome. Vanderlei Silva would face off against Hirohiko Yoshida, and the two Americans, Chuck Liddell and Quinton Jackson, would battle it out for a spot in the finals. Many expected the champion to outstrike and overpower Yoshida in their matchup, but Yoshida, electrified by the support of his home crowd, used his world-class judo to take Silva to the ground and attempt several submissions. Oh, oh there's yes. a good high roundhouse left. Yes, oh, and there are nice the knees there, the left knee, and now they are exchanging blows. Oh. Both fighters getting some in a big right hook by Vanderlei. Silva got in there as well. Ooh. Both good knees. Oh. And a good right by Yoshida. Oh, nice. And another one as the close exchange what? in Silva's corner. Now they're back fight. out to the center ring. Unbelievable. You can take him down. With this, and now we hit the There he is, you. taking him down. Silva, a jiu-jitsu black belt, defended well and overwhelmed Yoshida, landing several punishing blows. In the end, Silva took the unanimous decision and found himself in the tournament finals. Quinton Jackson and Chuck Liddell would battle it out to see who would advance to the tournament finals and get their shot at Silva and the tournament belt. You know, the thing about Chuck, that's another solid right hook. He's definitely got him at least stunned. Yes, he did, but maybe Chuck. There's that combination with that right hook Rampage is throwing. They're throwing big punches. They're definitely both man with big punches. It's an uppercut just missing by Rampage. Oh. Down. And there's a knee, a right, as Liddell is back up. Quinn going for the kill in the last minute. Just nice worked to the head, it's not nice. Instead of knee and an uppercut, it looked like Liddell was pushed down there. I'd like to see a different camera angle. Okay, here we go. Unbelievable. Where do you find it? Right hand lands. It wasn't until the fight hit the mat that Jackson truly showed what a dominating fighter he can be. An endless stream of punches and devastating elbows to the body would force Liddell's corner to throw in the towel. It's over. It's over. He threw in the towel. But they throw in the towel. Right into the head. How is Rampage staying in there? I have no idea. Look at 
smile at him. He is Wanderlei smiling at him. And that is it. That's the end of it right there. That is it. Wanderlei double with just a series of blows. For the first time in three years, Pride had crowned their second tournament champion. But this time in the middleweight division. And it was Vanderlei Silva who took home the tournament belt and proved to everyone that he really was the best middleweight fighter in the world. to Silva, Jackson refocused himself and came right back with a knockout of Manoa. And now he's going to go for the takedown. The slam. Beautifully oh. cut right on his head goes Manoa. Oh. Credit to the punk Manoa. Oh, now yes. The, the body lock going for the going for the Kamara. Jackson, another oh. slam. And Quentin is on a roll. It was then that Quinton Jackson's quest for a rematch with Silva and a chance at the middleweight title was almost within reach. But first, in a battle of number one contenders, Jackson would first have to face Brazilian top team fighter Ricardo Arona. Oh, it's dangerous. He's got to get out. Oh, trying. Oh, Dan, I told you. He'd pick him up and slip oh, him to the ground. Oh, he's he's down. He knocked him out. Unbelievable. Jackson's power bomb slam was one of the most shocking finishes in Pride Fighting Championships history. But more importantly, the feud between Jackson Jackson and Silva would be reignited as the two would meet for a second time in the Pride Ring. Quando as situações são essas, né, quando eu pego adversários como ele, eu geralmente consigo lutar melhor. Quando eu não gosto do adversário, eu luto, luto com, eu luto, sou mais agressivo na luta. E com ele não vai ser diferente. October 31st, 2004, at Pride 28, everything was on the line for both fighters. Jackson promised to knock out the Brazilian champion, and Silva, however, pledged that history would repeat itself. Jackson with a devastating knee that would leave him on the ropes and further proving that he was the best 205 pound fighter in the world. Not saying they couldn't beat him now, not saying he won't beat him in the future, but just those two nights, he just didn't have it. And the rivalry was a great epic rivalry because stylistically, they matched up well. They're not scared to stand in front of each other and bang out. And any moment, you know that they barely could have knocked Quentin out with a series of vicious knees, but you also knew that if Quentin had his way, he could pick Vanley up off the canvas and drop him on his head because, you know, Rampage is so strong or was so strong in, in the weight class. It's just the rivalry was a great intense rivalry because at the time, it was, it stylistically, they put themselves together and they forced themselves to be at the top of the game plan, the top of that weight class. Quentin Jackson versus Vanderlei Silva was just a heated conflict in and out of the ring. And really, the one thing holding Jackson back from ever getting to the top. Vanderlei was the champion. There was only one guy he had to beat. And the thing is, both times he was so close. And, and style-wise, they did match up well, but in a way that Vanderlei's strengths went against Quentin's weaknesses, and Quentin's weakness, uh, strengths went against Vanderlei's weaknesses in a way. And you know, watching those fights was incredibly, you're on the edge of your seat because you know it only takes one 
step in the right direction for either fighter and it's their fight. And I would have liked to have seen it get stretched out to a third fight and I really wanted to see Quentin you know, take, take that match, take one of those matches. And I know he could do it and I know he could do it today. But uh, it was great seeing the, the flames between the two of them. Wanting to prove that he wouldn't back away from any challenge, even if it meant facing larger opponents, Silva accepted a few fights from the heavyweight division. The first fighter along the way was Mark Hunt. Hunt, who is widely known as one of the heaviest hitters of all mixed martial arts, proved to be quite a challenge for Silva. Hunt striking a ball. Oh, big uppercut. You know, because... Another takedown by Vandalay. Beautiful job pulling those legs out. And there's Looking the for the head stop. Soccer kick misses. Right. Look, another nice shot by Vandalay. Yeah. And the takedown. Changes off to the trip. Oh, oh nice fight. Oh, he had oh, 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 Look at those shots. Oh, big up kicks by Vandalay. And now Hunt's taking Hunt a page out of stop. Silva's playbook. <laughs> going for the stop. Oh, oh my gosh. The man. atomic butt drop. That's just what it is. Silva held his own throughout the fight, giving the fans a 20 minute action packed fight. But in the end, and much to Silva's surprise, Hunt received the judge's decision to win the fight and handed Silva his first loss in the Pride Ring. The next challenge came during the 2006 Openweight Tournament. Silva, who entered the tournament during the second round as a replacement for the injured heavyweight champion Fedor Emelianenko, now looked to face Fujita. This isn't everything. In the semifinals, Silva was now positioned to face his next heavyweight challenge in Croatian kickboxer Mirko Krokop, who was considered to be the best striker in the sport. Now, four and a half years ago, the two fighters had fought before under a special rules match that ended in a draw. So both fighters were now looking to once and for all prove who was the better fighter. He's pissed off about this fight. He is not happy at all. Nice middle kick by Krokop and a good left hand as well as there's Silva. The one thing on Silva is his wild striking. Krokop the southpaw can come back with that straight left like that. Krokop's doing an incredible job of getting out of the way of all the punches. This is what I was talking about, the man that controls the ground and pound. And he definitely raining down a series of hammer fists on Vanderlei Silva. The crowd at Saitama is going crazy. Defensive from the bottom, but they're back on their feet, and now Silva again. Another nice middle kick delivered by Krokop. One of the best strikers in the business in Mirko Krokop. We have passed the midway point of round oh. one. Nice by Silva. Oh, my gosh. Wow, it's great to see how Crow comes back out. Oh, nice middle kick. It's, we're already starting to see the redness of uh, uh, Vandalay's right side of his hip. Crow Cop! Oh, that's that's oh, right no. Kick. oh no! In the end, Crow Cop dominated Silva and finished the fight with a high kick and handed Silva his first knockout loss ever. Silva proved to everyone that no matter the size or no matter the challenge, he would. by Vandalay Silva, who won a 22 win streak. Who did we find loses win streak to? Mark Hunt. How much did Mark Hunt weigh at the time he fought him? 290. Vandalay Silva weighed approximately 215, 220 at the time of the fight. We're talking about a fight that went the distance. This is how tough Vandalay Silva is. When you have to fight guys that are much bigger than you, sometimes 80, 90 pounds heavier than you, and you still are able to compete. When you fight the top guys at the weight class above you all the time. And then when you fight the top guys in your weight class all the time, and you have streaks, I, I, don't, I don't care how tough the top competition is, but when you have streaks that's 21, 22 fights in a row undefeated, I don't care who you are, that's a great fighter. Now you compile that all together into one guy, that makes Manley Silver by far the best fighter at 205 in the world and probably the best one or two fighter pound for pound in the world. Silva's next challenge came with a rematch with American Olympic wrestler and Pride welterweight champion Dan Henderson. Six years after Silva and Henderson's first meeting, these two fighters would show how their game had improved since their original battle. So I think he's going to use, use a lot of movement and then look for that big right hand of his. Vanderlei also, really is what it is. Good body and on the chin, come on. Measure. 
pressuring that right hand, Vanderlei. Left hook by Henderson lands. Oh, and the right buckles Henderson. Uh, Silva, I think he slipped more than anything, though. Both these guys are starting to swing real widely. This is, is uncharacteristic of Silva. Why is it Silva, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu specialist, putting this guy on the ground? Is it because Henderson. Oh, Henderson's right! Henderson's He's hurt! Henderson's hurt! Henderson's hurt. Henderson's hurt. Henderson's hurt. Henderson's hurt. Henderson's hurt. Henderson should have the advantage here. I think, you know, basically, Lon. Nice, nice knee tap by, by Henderson. Right here in the battle rules, but now, nice. and he gets Henderson. Big shots from Dan, finally finding some success on top. A lot of time left in this third round. Oh, wow, great right hook yeah. by Vanderlei. We can hear it down here at the announcer's table. Popped him. More low kicks from Vanderlei. Oh, oh no! Nice he set him up for that one. How do you like that one, Lon? He set him up beautifully. What a spinning back fist. He took the short punch and then spun and captured that face. Way to go, Dan Henderson, adding another tool to his arsenal. No way, what was happening? Oh, right hand. Oh, 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 Henderson showed that his game had improved, resulting in a third-round knockout. Silva lost his middleweight belt that night, making Henderson the first MMA fighter in history to now hold two belts in two different weight classes. You know, Van Lee always goes forward, and he never makes excuses. He's lost a couple times, and he, you know, he always comes back stronger. He never says anything bad. He was pit against the best fighters on earth, and, you know, he always went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Sometimes winning, sometimes losing, it doesn't matter. You don't, a champion, you see when he loses, you know, not only when he wins. And Vanderlei was never, was never below nobody. He was always, you know, up there in bravery and on everything. And toughness, mental toughness, everything, he was a warrior, you know. So it was something definitely that I should admire. Vanderlei Silva reigned with the middleweight title since its inception over five years ago, which, to say the least, is an incredible feat by any fighter in the sport. Don't count Silva out yet, as he now vows to come back, even stronger and more aggressive, to take back the middleweight title. After years of showcasing the world's best mixed martial arts fighters in arenas across Japan, Pride Fighting Championships had garnered a very large and loyal worldwide fan base. In October of 2006, Pride made history as they brought their promotion to the United States for the first time. Pride fans from all over the world flocked to Las Vegas to witness this historic event and to finally see why Pride Fighting Championships was the world's premier mixed martial arts promotion. The event did not disappoint as some of Pride's biggest stars showed why they're the world's best fighters. In the main event, Pride's undefeated heavyweight champion Fedor Emelianenko took on 2000 Grand Prix winner Mark the Hammer Coleman. For the first time in his Pride career, Coleman would be fighting in front of American fans and his family. Coleman showed the heart of a champion, but fell short in his fight against Fedor, who peppered the American with strikes and eventually catching Coleman once again in an armbar to end the fight. He's a lot of trouble down here. Fedor was finally able to show an American audience why he is the world's best fighter. Emotions ran high as Coleman consoled his onlooking daughters. And in a show of mutual respect and sportsmanship, Coleman congratulated the champion. With the rise of champions comes the fall of champions. And as Pride's current champions continue to reign, the next generation of champions have started to rise. The young shooter box fighter Mauricio Shogun Hua is one of the fastest on the rise. With only one loss in Pride and a total of two career losses, this young fighter is known for his aggressive style, brutal stomps, and phenomenal finishes. Incredible overhead, ready, jumped right into it, picked his hands apart, 
and dropped right into it. His most notable accomplishment is capturing the Pride 2005 Grand Prix middleweight belt at only age 23. Look at this! It's over! It's over! Unbelievable! I don't think I've ever seen a more dominating performance in my life, Boss Rutan! Oh, unbelievable! Look at this! The family is in the there! Fireworks! With victories over such great fighters as Quinton Jackson, Ricardo Arona, Kevin Randleman, and most recently Alistair Overeem, this rising star is one of the most promising contenders in the middleweight class. Rising lightweight star Takanori Gomi is storming the MMA stage as well. Nicknamed the Fireball Kid, this striker is known for his fast and powerful fists and is setting Pride's lightweight class on fire. It's been a tremendous... Oh! Oh! Blazing through Pride's Bushido class, Gomi has knocked down the best and captured Pride's lightweight belt at Shockwave 2005 with his victory over Sakurai. The most recent star in the scene is the unforgettable Dan Henderson, a U.S. Olympic wrestler. Dan Henderson has been dominating Pride since he won the welterweight tournament belt at Shockwave 2005. His most memorable victory is also his most recent in a much-anticipated rematch against the five-year middleweight champion Vanderlei Silva. Henderson stepped up a weight class and proved why he was one of the toughest competitors in Pride. Taking place at Pride 33, Pride's biggest U.S. show to date, Henderson put on a spectacular show for his home fans. Knocking out Silva in the third round, Henderson became the first MMA fighter ever to hold two belts in two different weight classes. As Pride's champions continue to make history, the next generation of fighters are not missing a beat. With so much talent always coming into the Pride ring, the legacy of Pride continues. Working on the head now for Rona. Oh, right! Hold on! What's up? Oh, he's down. He's on. Down, 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 down. It's over! Sonka just pulls the upset. He knocks out the ball and the roll. Following the success of Pride's second U.S. show, Pride President Nobuhiko Sakikabara made a shocking announcement that he would be stepping down as President of Pride and that Pride Fighting Championships had been sold to UFC owners Frank and Lorenzo Fertitta. ご存知のように、10年目を目前に控えた2006年という年は、我々プライドにとってはまたプライドを支える私。そしてドリームステージにとっても大変厳しい出来事や局面が重なった年となりました。正直、自分の中でも何度もこのプライドっていうものを諦めそうになったり、何度もドリームステージの代表の座を握り出しそうにもなりました。しかし、そんな時、リ
プライドの魂を持ってこのプライドを新たなステージに向けて進めてくれる頼もしい男がいます高田さんここに来てくださいはい。It's been six years now since the UFC has been purchased by myself and my brother and Dana White. And through his leadership, the UFC has now become a global powerhouse. That it brings me a tremendous amount of joy that I'm able to pull these two great organizations and two great brands together to create the most powerful and preeminent group. Of fighters and shows that has ever been seen in the world of MMA. I think we'll see some incredible Pride events and some incredible UFC events. And as I said before, I'm such a big fan, I'm probably more excited than anybody. Being a fighter, fighters are born with something that most normal people don't have. It's something inside of them that they're born with that regular people do not possess. And One of the things in life for a fighter is to be able to challenge himself against the best fighters in the world, to find out who really is the number one fighter in each weight class. Money is great, it's great to make money, but at the end of the day, what a fighter wants to leave behind is his legacy. Who is the best fighter in the world in each weight class? How does he test himself? So finally, after seven years, we're going to be able to answer all the questions we've been waiting to answer. All the challenges we've been waiting to、uh, make happen are now going to happen. We, as an organization, Pride as an organization, and you, the fans, all benefit and the fighters to find out who really is the best fighter in the world. This purchase will unify MMA's two biggest promotions and usher in the next era of mixed martial arts.
from bitter rivalries, championship bouts,